Hello YouTubers! This channel is all about RV living, traveling, and do-it-yourself projects. Please hit the subscribe button below. Hello everyone! Today is mostly about inverters. I made a huge mistake on the last video about charge controllers. When I put the video together, I left out the charger I liked best for the Tesla batteries or 18650 batteries. The Snyder Connex MPPT 60150 is a great choice and I will discuss it at the end of this video. There are a lot of great inverters available and there's a lot of junk. Do not use junk. This is what converts or inverts your storage to AC power. For 12 volt system, systems, which I do not recommend for any application, where constant load is higher than one kilowatt, many RVs do use 12 volt systems with lead acid batteries. However, if using a LiPo battery, there is no advantage of using a 12 volt system because you have to separate your vehicle's 12 volt system from your storage battery because they are not compatible. So if you cannot use the vehicle to help keep the charge of the storage battery using a lithium battery, I highly, highly recommend using a 12 volt system to reduce your amperage draw by half. I recommend designing a system that the amperage draw from a storage battery for a short period load below 50 amps and for a constant load of more than 30 minutes at 25 amps and below. Using this design criteria does require larger storage systems or moving to a 48 to 60 volt system. For an inexpensive RV solution in a 12 volt, check out the Go Power Inverter. For RVs, I would only use inverters with chargers and tra transfer switches. The reason for this is most RVs will be visiting RV campgrounds with 30 amp hookups. And all you have to do is plug in the RV and the transfer switch does all the work to switch to the shore power and if needed, charge the battery. The charger on this unit can be programmed for a lithium battery by customizing the charging profile. And what I mean by this unit, the one I use is the Zantrax. For all lithium storage systems, I would use either the Xantrax, like the one I have, or the Magnum Energy. If you decide on another brand, be sure the inverter charger has a charging mode that can be customized. Xantrax also makes a 48 volt that is also great for RVs. If you plan on using AC on your system, the only way to go is a 48 volt system to lower your amp draw under constant load from the air conditioner. Now for off-grid home applications and backup solar generators, I would highly recommend the Snyder SW4048 inverter. It can handle up to 3800 watts constant load and 4400 watts for 30 minutes or less and a peak draw of 7000 watts for 5 seconds. And it can accept battery storage voltage up to 68 volts. Remember, the higher voltage means the battery works less, applying the amperage to uh, your AC application. 3800 watt constant draw at 24 volts equals 168 amp draw. A 48 volt battery, the same load is only at 80 amp draw, and a 60 volt 60 volt battery is only a 63 amp draw. I am not, I cannot stress the importance of reducing constant load amp draw for long life of a system. The Snyder is an industrial quality, but it, it is a better price point than the Outback equipment. Now let's look at the charge controllers that I left out of the previous video. The, Sn the Snyder Connex MPPT 60150 is a great choice. Its price range is below the Outback and its quality is just as good. Now if you have a long run from your solar panel to your electric room, I would highly recommend the Snyder XW8600 solar charger. 
This charge controller is pricey, but will save you a lot of money if you have over a 100 foot run from your electrical room to your panels. And this would be the case if you're mounting the panels on a ground system uh, to get away from shading and things of that nature. Remember, if you measure the distance from your equipment, your charge controller sto storage and inverter room to your solar panels, and you carry over 20 amps of power, the cable size gets larger and larger. This charge controller allows you to configure your panel array up to 600 volts, which means the amperage will be below 12 amps for a large array of 4600 watts. Example of this would be, a port, would be 14 of the Panasonic N330 panels, which is 4620 watts. And you could figure those in two strings of seven, seven panels and that would come out to be 487 volts at 12.4 amps. With the other charge controllers, you would have seven strings of two panels, which equals 139 volts at 42.5 amps. To carry 42 amps any distance requires very large wire, two, two odd or bigger, at 2.42 uh, $2.42 a foot. Now, even with 2 watt wire running 100 feet, you will still have a voltage drop and it would be above the acceptable 2%. Now, some people say you can, you can have a voltage drop as much as 4, but your efficiency is going way down when you start getting those voltage drops due to long runs of uh, that you're carrying all the amperage. My goal with these videos is to first promote the lithium battery technology. As of 2018, the cost is about the same for usable power comparing a lithium battery with the lead acid. Granted, you have to do much of the work yourself to keep the cost the same, but the lithium technology improves the solar system twofold. Next, I will be putting together three different systems. Two for RVs, a 12 volt and a 24 volt system, and a larger off grid tiny home system that's going to either be 48 volts to 73 volts. I haven't fully decided yet. Thanks for visiting the RV Power Channel, and please come again. And if you haven't subscribed, please help me out and hit the subscribe button. Check with you later.